All right, good morning, Poolsville and surrounding area, and welcome back to Coffee Shots with Val. This morning, I am here with our Poolsville Town Commissioner, President of our board, Jim Brown, as you know, and I am here also with the, uh, the distinguished guest today that I am so honored to have, Greg Wims, the Up County Services Director. Uh, and he's going to tell you what that actually means in a second. Um, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about uh, the addition of the Wellness Center uh, to Poolsville High School. So as everybody knows, we just recently had the groundbreaking for the high school and we're so excited that we were able to get money, money, money um, to, to bring that. Uh, but along with that, I believe about 16 high schools in uh, Montgomery County currently have the addition of a wellness center and of course since we are getting a new as Mark said state-of-the-art um, high school we hope that that is going to be coming soon with the wellness center so we want to talk about what that looks like what it means what is a wellness center what does it encompass and how does it service not only our children but our community so let's start first with, um, I'm gonna ask Jim to talk about Fair Access and what yeah. they've been doing to, um, you know, to obtain these services for us up here in Poolsville. Uh, Val, so thank you for that. Thank you for inviting me today, Greg. It's great seeing you again. Greg is definitely one of our partners in progress in Poolsville, which, uh, which I love having him up anytime he comes up here. And Greg comes up here quite a bit. So uh, he spent a lot of time in Poolsville and uh, we appreciate it because it shows what the initiatives that we have going on. So just to get, jump right into it, um, Fair Access started uh, four, almost four years ago uh, with the idea that we didn't have the level of services that we need in the Up County region, specifically Poolsville and essentially concentric circles away from Poolsville. Um, that led us to create a, a, a group that decided we are going to address those inequities and we're going to figure out how to get uh, the proper level of attention and the proper level of funding from the county. We did that uh, through the, again through the creation of Fair Access, but what happened, the offshoot was, is that as we were creating this group, these needs were, you know, they were coming at us from left and right. We were trying to figure out, okay, well, we know we need a high school. But then uh, we did. We had a health, uh, county did a health survey and realized that we had some terrible health out, health outcomes for this area. It was devastating news, and it was actually news that we knew at our root, but we had never had any proof, and it was all mostly anecdotal. Um, once we decided to take some of that data, combine it with our needs for a new high school and the, and the facility that we're looking for, our idea was to create as many buckets of funding as we could and make a case for as many buckets of funding as we could to get us a new high school that would also encompass uh, what was then, four years ago, which we didn't know now, a wellness center that would also serve the Up County community. The wellness center has come to the forefront. We know we're getting a new high school. We're extremely thankful to our, uh, our group at the county, including the county executive, Mark Elridge, and our county council member, uh, Andrew Friedson, and others for spearheading and getting the funding devoted through the budget process and devoted to Poolsville High School. But the next step is this wellness slash community center. And as we figured out what our needs are, the county, in fact, the country has figured out there are significant mental and physical health issues that Absolutely. have to be dealt with. And that is yeah. the that is the, the big picture of the wellness yeah. center. And one of the underlying strong, strong advocates for helping us to get that high school was the one and only Greg Wims. And we really appreciate everything that you did for us. A lot of it was behind the scenes, Greg, and you didn't get the type of credit that Andrew and Mark well, he's not elected. Yeah, no, I bro. know exactly. He's a he's a <laughs> yes. He's a paid he's employee kind of just elected. doing his job. <laughs> but there's something to be said for a paid employee in Montgomery County who does their job so well that it helps to bring the elected officials. Um, and in Grace's case, it doesn't it never looks for credit either. Exactly it hides from credit. Exactly. And so you know, Jim, to your point about the needs that that are happening in the country now and the things that we need. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of light has been shined on that fact that we have to take care of our students mentally and physically. And you know, we have a lot of other needs here as well. And our seniors, our seniors. Um, you know, we started the Poolsville Area Senior Center years ago, as I was a huge, you know, part of driving that program. 
You know, Jim really stepped up and helped us to get the funding to uh, Ike Leggett helped us to get funding. We had a grant from him right out of the gate. Uh, and so we really have been trying to focus on the wellness of our entire community for a long time. And so it's really important to us. So Greg, what I want to ask you today is, you've been in, in, inside of a couple of the wellness centers around Montgomery County. Tell us what that looks like. Well, first, thank you for having me. And uh, as you said, the Pusa is one of my favorite places to come to. And so with the wellness centers, it's really to minister for the students at first, the ones in the schools, because as uh, Jim just said, there's a lot of uh, mental uh, issues with our students coming out of the pandemic. So they've been uh, sort of locked in uh, for a couple of years. So at the wellness center, you have your nurse, you have some counselors and so forth, and they're not in some every day, but they rotate and when the need comes up, they uh, can help those students. Also, what we found in the wellness centers that I visit, and the main one is at Watkins Mill High School down in the Montgomery Village area, they partnered with another nonprofit called Identity. And so here in Poolsville, you could partner with other, or even Wamco, it doesn't matter, but it's yes. the partnership that helps because they can bring in the, the students uh, and they can get the help they need. Now, as far as the parents and so forth, you mentioned earlier, and, and I'm trying to work with our county executive and the county council on actually getting more health services here. So we have the wellness center that we have to push for, but also the, yes. what I call the um, mobile clinic, the mobile med thing that the county is working on now. We're planning as we speak today to try to see if we can get something maybe once a month, once a week. we're trying to figure that out. But I can say confident, for, uh, Confidence. confidence <laughs> yeah, that we're going to have something like that for the foods area in this coming fiscal year, which started last mm -hmm. week, so it's July 1 to June 30th. Yes. So, so the wellness center is absolutely important. Foods will needs it. They also the comprehensive help from HHS, which is Health and Human Services, yes. with our what I call mobile clinic to come. Yeah, because you know, um, so the wellness center, you know, and obviously what would be a part of our high school program and the things that it can do for our students. I mean, as we know today, uh, our students need a lot of support uh, mentally and physically. And, and being able to get that help in school with, with folks and counselors that they know are going to take interest in their, in their well-being uh, is important. We want them to be able to come to school and feel comfortable to talk to the counselors. To see to see somebody who is in the in the um, in the health uh, field, you know, our we go back to the whole police officer thing. We want people to feel comfortable with the, with the police officers and the security that they feel in our schools. As you know, my husband is 34 years retired, Montgomery yeah. County SWAT. Uh, we are clearly advocates of having the SROs in the school and, and feeling safe. We just want our children to be able to come to. We, we're not asking the county to take on the entire well-being of a child. But when you spend that many hours in a day in a school, there seems it seems to be the proper place um, amongst their peers to be able to seek out that help and get that help. So that is what we want. Um, and on the, on the other hand, our, our senior citizens, you know, as we're all creeping up there in age, we want to make sure <laughs> I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm just fighting for, you know, the future of myself, <laughs> right. which I am. Um, we all want to feel as though our seniors, when the day comes that you're no longer able to do certain things like drive or walk or, or be alone in an environment, that doesn't mean that the quality of life that you have known should end just because you now have some inability to do something that enabled you to go places and be a part of things. We want our seniors to be able to get health care. Uh, we received a grant recently from the county, I think it was $40,000, WOMCO did, yeah. to do a health care study. We've hired someone, we are really excited, I happen to be on that board as well. Uh, we are really excited for the project. Uh, are you familiar with? Yes, I am. Yeah. I've been working with WOMCO, just to tell you, uh, Jane Stern and my husband Fred 
40 years ago, I was one of their volunteers to show you how I love music, you know, because you know my age. Now I'm a senior also, so I know it well. And Fred and Jane um, were amazing people. Yeah. So Greg, you may not know this. I also started the toy program at the Pulse. Oh. So myself and Tim Pike, um, uh, uh, a couple of other residents, Joel Lawball, we started the program where we were just for one pal. We, we started delivering toys out of the back of our car and we would collect them in town yeah. and then we would take them from home to home. Well, I fought and fought and fought until finally we got Fort Dietrich to give us toys. And then after that, we got Toys for Tots to give us toys. And, and we were getting donations from places like Cavanta, right. large donations, and I would go shopping and buy the toys. I mean, Pulso is a very unique place. In my mind, because I've been here for so long and I've created, helped to create so many programs, if you really want something, as Jim knows, with fair access, you just have to stand up and fight for what it is that a small community needs. Um, and then just bring it to fruition. And we have to keep having um, things like this to build relationships with the folks in the county and the state uh, that are gonna help us get there. We need them to know that Poolsville is, you know, an, an amicable group to deal with and work with, and that we not only have needs, but we are very grateful for the things that we're receiving. Right, Jim? As I mean, we, we search out our, as I said earlier, our partners in progress, and, uh, and Greg and uh, the county executive, county executive's office, Kathy Matthews before Greg. Love her. Um, we, um, we try to make ourselves as approachable and as, uh, as I would call it, shovel ready as possible. Yes. So that when there's a uh, potential for funding and initiatives to take place, that the people that care about us, like Greg, can wrap their arms Absolutely. around our community and uh, help shepherd projects and funding in our direction. So, and that's in keeping with what Greg's talking about now with the Wellness Center. Yeah. We know this is a county initiative, but we're still amongst the group that has to like hold her hand up and say, you know, pick me, right. pick me, pick yes. me. Yes. Um, and so, it, you know, that's, we obviously we, we're doing it now. We plan on continuing to do that. We love having allies that recognize that we have, uh, that we're a special region and a special community because of our yes. location and our positioning in the county. So uh, again, you know, Fair Access was founded under the idea that even though we have less people, we don't count less. So uh, the folks have that that have embraced it at the county level and state level re recognize that you know there's going to be such special circumstances and we need special attention and we appreciate it. And, you know, Greg's been right at the front of the line on that. If I could, uh, and Jim, say that uh, fair access has been tremendous. Uh, we, when you started at the very beginning, when we had the breakfast at Poolsville yes. Elementary, right? All Thank the you. elected officials were there, and that was day. all the, the, the players. Yeah. And from there, the great work you've been doing, they talk to us and so forth. And this is why I think this year, after 30, Val and I were talking, 30 some years, pretty much got everything you want in this budget because you yeah. put, laid it out and you said, right, you might have a small amount of people living here, but you should be treated the same. Yeah. So you have the school, the wellness center we're yes. working on, yeah. uh, the uh, funding like for Wampco and so forth. Uh, but the library, we can't forget that. No, no, read, no. Read no. And the, the library. Yes, and the pool. And the pool. Yeah. And, and so the Great the, Crush facility. Yeah. Yes. And the Great and Crush. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, yep. Jim and I went to Annapolis yeah. and testified yeah. with Brian right. Feldman yeah. the very first time it was presented. Um, right. And, you know, we are just so grateful. Yeah. And again, it goes back to what we were just saying, this relationship building. Jim and I have worked together so hard alongside of some amazing people, Link Hoeing, yes. you know, Kevin Schramm, Link is some, the best. our other, yes. Link is the best, and he was supposed to be with us, unfortunately he's out of town. Um, but, you know, we have been so fortunate to be able to pair up with a group of people that love Poolsville so much, genuinely love this up county area. Yes. Poolsville, Bellsville, Barnesville, Dickerson, Boyd's, you know, Sugarland. We yeah. love our we love our people. And I can say, and again, talking about fair access and link, who's not here, uh, Jim, 
the, the whole county now knows what your issues are and what you need. And, and they know and they acknowledge, and I can acknowledge on this part that, that you haven't gotten the fair treatment that yes. you should have gotten yes. over the years. But I think now everyone knows, and with the new high school, it's going to be, because it'll be state of the art. So wonderful that everybody's going to want to gravitate with other services around yes. for the community. And that's so what we want. Foodsville is on the radar yep. for all the elected officials. And the new ones that are running, each one of them, as you know, Jim, yes. has said, who's will will get the proper support they need. We were with a big yeah. group of them last night. Yeah. <laughs> Jim and I never, we're always in the, uh, right. look, give me a high five, you guys, because yeah. you know what? <laughs> we have really done an amazing job. Yeah. And yeah. to um, say what, to, to back up what you're saying, fair access yeah. has been just the best thing that ever happened. Um, uh, and, in, and, and we know, Especially coming from me, we cannot ignore the fact that Andrew Friedson um, came to Poolsville yeah. two years before he was running, you know, met up with us and, and really took us under his arm. Yeah. We were with him for an event last night and, uh, and yeah. the whole D15 crew, and we are so grateful for the fact that he took an interest in us to help push this through. So I just want to say thank you so much, Greg, for coming out today. Um, I really appreciate it. I know it was a last minute call. Jim called. You answered. It's nice. Once thank again, you, it is a testament to the relationships that we have built yeah. that someone will say on a Thursday, I'll drop what I'm doing and come to you at 9 a.m. So Greg, thank you. And Jim, yeah. thank you for being my partner in all things yeah, and helping to my build pleasure, the relationships that we've built over the years. Uh, thank you, and thank you for joining us once again with uh, Coffee Shots with Val. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, locals, we always want to say thank you to locals. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap.